I was actually expecting to like shoot fireworks off for Michigan, but it was such a blowout that it was kind of like, eh. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sa- I'm gonna save these for the next one. <laughs> I very I very much had a Kirby Smart thing. Like now that I'm thinking Ooh. about it, like I actually had a Kirby Smart mentality. I was like, nice. You know what? Like I'm not going to shoot these off. I'm going to save them. The season's not over yet. Welcome to My Got a Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I preview Georgia's rematch with Alabama in the College Football Playoff Championship Game. And we answer questions from you, our listeners. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at mygotapodcast. Finally, if you like what you hear, please subscribe, rate, five stars obviously, and review the show. If you leave us a review, you just might hear it on an upcoming episode. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. I've got the barrel proof, so we could go off the rails pretty quickly here. Nice. All right. I, my, my theme for this game is back to basics. So I actually went back and checked to see what I was drinking. I listened uh, to the opening of our preview for Clemson for the first game. Okay. Uh, and in, in that one, I was drinking uh, Maker's Mark 46. So that's what I've got tonight. That's a solid. That's a solid bourbon. What was I drinking? Out of curiosity, uh, it was uh, it was your one of your it was your Georgia bourbon. My Georgia. Oh, wait. Was, was it, it Fiddler? It was your, I don't know. It was. I just remember you saying it was. It was something I hadn't heard of, and you were like, "It's my only Georgia bourbon." Is what you said. Uh. And I was commenting on how I only owned three bourbons at the time. <laughs> <laughs> how many do you own now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, more than I know off the top of my head. Is it sad that you that, that that's the state of affairs? But then, like you look online, and it's like people like John, or you know, I mean, I hesitate to say. I mean, mine's a modest modest collection, but <laughs> I, yeah, 30, I 40 like, bottles deep. And you're like, oh my gosh, right? Like I I feel like I have a lot. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Okay, so we're here. What a season. Uh, where we, we are where we thought we would be. Um, and it's good to know that it's not just where we hoped we would be, you know, the beginning of a season, you're always hopeful. (laughs) Uh, It's pretty cool. You know, like I can remember like back, like being in college and everything, you know, like all the, like, this is the year, this is the year. And always thinking that and like, you know, my house, especially like in the world. (laughs) <laughs> right. Especially like in the Donham years, like when I first got to college, like, this is the year. Nope. You know, like not even close. Um, it's pretty cool to be able to to think that, you know, ahead of the season and then see it uh, come to fruition. Um, and then, of course, you know, we were saying this for the SEC championship, but uh, it had to be Bama, right? <laughs> so... Uh, the inevitable beast might as well be them. Um, you know, obviously we to be the man, you got to beat the man, and this is That's right. This is you know, I I know that like d- deep down, like this is kind of who I wanted it to be against. Like mm-hmm. even if we had won the SEC championship over Alabama and you know potentially knocked them out, which by by and large it looks like that that probably wouldn't have been the case. But yeah, um, you know if you had won the SEC, like you still would have felt, felt good. And then, but if you had been facing like a, a Cincinnati or a Michigan in the national championship or something like that, and ended up blowing them out like we did against Michigan, it, it would definitely have, be amazing and still feel good. But like, yeah. I don't know, crushing Alabama soul uh, would, would have a little bit of a different tinge uh, in this particular game specifically, especially given how the season has panned out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they've been on top for for so long, and you know, I mean they've always been the roadblock, and I mean they were the ones there in seventeen or whatever January of eighteen, whatever seventeen season. Um, I mean it is it is coming. You know, we've talked about you know like twenty seventeen was like widely referred to as the revenge tour season, and we had started talking kind of middle of this year. Could this could this be this end up being a revenge tour season? And so now we've got the ultimate ultimate case of it right here so 
Um, let's do the normal matchup stuff. Uh, so we got obviously eight o'clock on ESPN on Monday night. So actually, hey, Monday night football, right? College football playoff championship is Monday we got, night. We got Monday night football. Um, the official I hashtag. It, I wish it was Saturday. It should be Saturday. 100% agree. Uh, I got to say, having, I can't remember if we talked about this or not. Having the uh, semifinal on Friday, I actually ended up really liking. Um, I didn't like that it was on New Year's Eve, but I did like that it was on Friday because all day Saturday, I thought it was Sunday. And then I kept realizing, hey, it's only Saturday. And I had like another day <laughs> before I had to go I'm back su- to work. It was awesome. I'm, su- I, I'm surprised you even knew what day it was because basically from, from, <laughs> from like uh, when the kids get out of school – until until they go back, I have no idea what day it is. What time is it? I have no idea, no con, no concept of time. <laughs> right, right. Uh, all right. So the the official hashtag is hashtag national championship. So um, we'll have to check that out. I'm sure there's a nice little emoji or whatever those things it, are called that goes along with it. It is. So. It is. There's a there's a little a little emoji that's the national championship uh, emoji or. Fabicon yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, the weather will be partly cloudy, a high of 23 and a low of 12. Uh, so Indianapolis this time of year, quite cold. Thankfully, the game will be indoors. Uh, and that's a thankful thing for not only the players, uh, but also the fans, um, which I'm sure we'll get into this a bit, but I am – going by the way um so i'll be there uh going uh my dad Fripp dog shout out Fripp dog was able to secure tickets uh so he and i will be venturing to indianapolis and braving the cold and uh going to the game uh going to the game together so another revenge uh tour type thing personally um on that same note, because my dad and I went to the, we went to the the game in Atlanta, uh, the seventeen national championship game against these guys. Uh, we were sitting together for that one, um, so we will be back, be back together for this one. That's pretty awesome. A little little father son action. A little jealous. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll be cool. That'll be cool. Uh, some of this stuff we've already kind of gone through is just you know, adding one, right? So Alabama's 13 and one on the season now, seven and one in the SEC, the all time matchup with Alabama. Obviously, 20, we have 25 wins, 42 losses, and four ties. And we are now up to seven in a row that Alabama has won over us. Um, as far as the college football playoff championship, this is obviously our second appearance in that. We are 0-1 against Alabama, as we all remember. Uh, this is Alabama's sixth appearance in the college football playoff championship game. They are 3-2 in college football playoff championship games. Um, so, need, to, need to make that one more for an even 500. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> for right. both of us. <laughs> right. Yeah, seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Hey man, um, we, can, we, we can we can even even the score there on, on a number of levels. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, that was all I had for that kind of stuff. You know, we went through some kind of fun like Georgia Bama matchup stuff when we played them the first time. So I didn't pull any other any other things like that. Um, although you, I don't know if you want to say this now. You had something. What's what's uh, or do you want to talk about that later? Right, we Are can... we talking about the injury news? The injury news? No, news? there was like uh, some kind of anniversary or something. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, so this is actually I think it was a couple of days ago, wasn't it? Um, where it marked uh, Nick Saban's fifteenth year, fifteen year anniversary um, mm-hmm. employment at the University of Alabama. That's what it was. Um, he was getting off the off the airplane 15 years ago, and little did we know how much would how much it would change everything. <laughs> seriously, seriously, he should have stayed at the Dolphins like he said he was going to. <laughs> yeah, seriously, uh, jerk. just just go back in time. If we could, right. if we'd only get Bill and Ted to go back in time yeah, and just yes. convince him to stay. Right, seriously. Um, uh, there was a nice little screenshot, by the way, that uh, was like a, a perfect, like no context college football type post f- 
for, for Twitter with uh, Nick Saban getting off the airplane, literally walking on the tarmac, and behind him is a guy videotaping, taking a picture of him on a tractor, <laughs> looking right. like he is a looking like he is a farmer. <laughs> uh, it is perfect. <laughs> well, you sent, I remember you sent me that picture, and I was like, "What is this? Like, what are you, <laughs> what are you showing me?" Uh, that's too funny. So, uh, you know, initially, like looking at the so looking at news and notes, right? Um, I listened to Kirby's, uh, you know, media time this week, and n- nothing like super jumped out at me. And I think actually the thing that jumped out to me the most that is a good thing, you know, a good place to be in here is we've spent like almost every preview episode <laughs> this season, like talking about who's in, who's out and, you know, who, how, we're, how we're hopeful, you know, and Kirby's hopeful that this guy's going to play or that guy's going to play, but it is nice. I think we pretty much know we've got who we've got. Right. Um, and I guess we're pretty much hundred percent healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, other than the guys that were out have been out for the year for a while, we got, everybody, yeah, yeah. we got everybody back, right? And, you know, Salyer really looked great and kind of returned to form. Um, was great to have him back and, and you know, doing his thing in the Orange Bowl. Um, and Chris Smith as well. So um, that was awesome. So that actually, that the, the lack of that kind of uh, discussion is actually what jumped out to me the most. Um, well, we're, we're hopeful. We're hopeful that there is no news in that regard for us yes <laughs> for the for the next for the next few days here <laughs> now how about really, this saban, really ever <laughs> right right but how about that saban used the word hopeful on some of his guys uh in his media availability because you know they suddenly they've got all the guys that are questionable and, and, and saban's hopeful to get him back yeah no that's that's definitely was was some eventful news that i saw from from that side of the the tracks was he definitely it was clearly like oh this is where Kirby got it from which you know shock, <laughs> yeah. shocker shocker right. uh right. We're, we're we're building everything and and riffing off of everything that uh that he learned from from saving himself uh but yeah they're hopeful for some guys that get back at some pretty I mean if if you're being honest like and I was texting with um an, 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 the neighborhood guy uh that's an Alabama alumni um earlier today about this as well i was like hey you know how are you feeling about the national championship and he's like I, a better question is how are you feeling about the national championship right. and i was i was like well i mean i'm feeling pretty good you know, we're coming off a pretty good performance but uh you also got some injuries going on and it was like he was completely oblivious to to you know the potential perils that they have on the offensive lines like, yeah well we've got a lot of depth there <laughs> which which they do obviously because they're Alabama, but at the same time, like mm-hmm. you've got two guys that are seasoned veteran starters uh, along that offensive line, and um, I'm I'm totally going to butcher I'm totally going to butcher the name. Uh, that's okay. Timeout. We don't have the we don't have the the Scott Howard pronunciation guide. That's okay. Yeah, the, the two big ones. The two big ones for me. Uh, and technically it's four because a couple of them are like, are they doubtful? Are they, you know, maybe they're going to play sparingly or whatever. But like the two big ones for me are along the offensive line, which if we're being honest, that, that's where this game is ultimately going to be played is along the trenches. Um, yeah. You've got, you got Ikior and Chris Owens on the offensive line. Um, they've got a, the right guard Ikior and the right tackle uh, Chris Owens. Uh, both of those guys left the Cotton Bowl with injuries and did not return. Um, yeah. I believe I can't remember which one it was. I want to say it was Ikior left uh, in the first quarter and did not return, and Chris Owens I think left late in the fourth quarter um, and didn't return. Um, Chris Owens has an ankle injury, which if you are a large human being, such as the, the offensive lineman uh, at, at this level, um, that's probably not an easy injury to get over quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I have very weak ankles myself, and I'm fairly small. <laughs> <laughs> so I know how much that sucks. I love, um, uh, I love it when we compare ourselves to athletes getting injured because I, I have done that multiple times. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Um, but Ikior has a shoulder injury, which, you know, I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, especially on the interior, you, you're using your arms quite a bit. So 
that, those, yeah. those could be those could be impactful. And then you've also got um, and, and the thing is about those two is that they're being backfilled by a true freshman who's never been on this stage and a sophomore, which maybe has been in the stage, I guess, depending on if he was playing before. Um, mm-hmm. Amari, Amari Kite and JC Latham. Um, those are two names to watch out for if you see them uh, heavily in the game. How we scheme around, how Lanning kind of schemes around those guys. Uh, if I were a betting person, I would say that we would probably try to pick on the true freshman um, mm-hmm. a good bit on the offensive line if that's the case. And then on the flip side, much like in the SEC championship, you have um, a couple of guys on their side that are injured on the secondary. Um, you've got uh, Jalen Armour Davis. They call him J-A-D. Um, he hasn't been necessarily ruled out, but he's got a hip problem, which is pretty important if you're a, a cornerback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then you've got Josh Job, who is a – um, who's out with a, a turf toe. He didn't play at all in the Cotton Bowl, and I believe he's basically not going to play, but is listed as doubtful for the game. So you got two guys, two cornerbacks that are that are out, yeah. potentially out or limited um, hmm. for this game. Um, you've got a, a tr- some true freshmen that are basically going to be stepping into, into those roles, which, um, you know... Uh, uh, they're obviously heralded players, but at the same time, right. they're recruited you're, by Alabama. <laughs> right. You're playing, yeah. you're playing in the biggest game of the season, and you're yeah. getting true freshman work out of some pretty key positions. So it'll be interesting to watch those those matchups. But kind of like what you were saying, we're basically 100 percent healthy on everybody that's potentially available on our side, and and you know they're the ones that have injury questions. Right. Right. For sure. Um, however, I'm sure that, you know, the Bama faithful are now drinking the Kool-Aid, I would imagine, because that is actually the name of the replacement corner who's, who's coming in and play. Uh, I'm forgetting his last name. What's the Kool-Aid kid's name? Uh, it is, oh, hold on. It's, it's Kool-Aid McKinstry. McKinstry. <laughs> I mean, you know, definitely on the all-name team. So maybe he's at least got to get that going for him. I mean, that's a bold strategy to name your kid after Kool-Aid. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. I do love <laughs> it. I do love it. Uh, all right. Um, you know, I said, uh, I said in the text that my, my entire analysis for this game was that, you know, we've seen one Georgia team play for 13 games out of 14, and we saw another game, another team show up in the other game uh, being the SEC championship game. So are we going to see, you know, the team that we've seen 13 times, the team that we've seen one time and, you know, whichever team shows up, you know, it's going to kind of decide that game. And so that's it for my, I got a podcast. This has been the shortest episode ever. I was <laughs> 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 like, that was, that was my definitive analysis. Uh, and then we were going to have a shorter episode. Ha ha. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, all right, let's go into let, – let's do what we usually do. So let's talk about uh, our offense, their defense, so when we've got the ball. Um, yeah, before before we jump into that, I mean, I think that oh. you're you're right. I mean, if you literally okay. looked yeah. at everything, it's like mm-hmm. is the one game in the SEC championship that meant basically nothing for our boys, yeah. is that the outlier or is it the team that showed up and basically blew the doors off of everybody else they played? Yeah. And I figure that – the team in the country, right? Like we can't, we can't, we can't go. The Georgia hasn't played anyone route now, right? No, yeah. Kirby, Kirby can't, Kirby can't win can't the serious. big one. Is, right. is effectively dead. And like the only hurdle here is can Kirby beat Alabama? Like that's really right. what it comes down to. And frankly, can Stetson Bennett beat Alabama? Because you know, if we were yeah. to look at some other news and notes, which maybe the people out there don't realize this, but Stetson Bennett is thirteen and three as a starter at the University of Georgia. Yeah. Yep. Two of those losses were against Alabama. Wow. The other loss yeah. was to Florida last yeah. year when he was basically hurt. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, in a game that he got hurt in, in the middle of in the game that he we got were, hurt in. Yeah, we were winning before he got hurt. Right. So, yeah. No, I think that uh, I, I, this is this game, you know, he, he definitely downplayed it in, the, in his. Um, 
he downplayed it a good bit in his um, press conference, talking about like the the pressure and mm-hmm. you know how he recognizes that this is a, a, an important game, but like he doesn't look at it like that. It's just the, it's just the next game, that kind of thing. And yeah. it's not fair to put that kind of pressure on 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 the, on the squad and that kind of stuff. But like, I mean, he's got a hump to get over too, and there's a potential for him to truly answer and become an absolute Georgia legend uh, on a number of levels. Um, He has the opportunity to, he has the opportunity to, to, you know, basically achieve the status that first round draft picks, third round draft picks, um, SEC record holders have been unable to achieve. Um, Aaron Murray didn't win anything. Now, Aaron Murray didn't win a national championship. Yeah. David Green didn't win a national championship. Matt Stafford didn't win a national championship. Yeah. Uh, Lord knows Joe Cox didn't win a national championship. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. you get where I'm going. Um, Jake Fromm. Jake Fromm didn't win a national championship. Yeah. I mean, it's um, you know, rare, rare company. I mean, he's going to be up there with Buck Galoo. You know, I mean, of the, of the guys around these days, it's the only the guy you can talk about. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, there, there's, there's, there's definitely a lot of pressure and I, I think that they were downplaying it a little bit, but let's go into the matchups. No, fair, fair. I think you're right. Um, okay. So our offense, their defense, um, I don't have a whole lot here, right? Cause we, we've already played these guys, but for what I do have, um, like a Todd Monken thing, I want to see him keep the running backs involved. So, you know, I'm definitely like, everyone knows that I love to run the ball, but I'm not necessarily saying that we have to, you know, run the ball, (laughs) but I think we do have to keep them involved. Um, Like the things that we saw laterally uh, with the backs, even in the passing game that were essentially runs, you know, we had talked about that kind of going into the Michigan game. We saw a lot of it. It worked really well. Would love to continue to see that. Um, And obviously we need to, you know, Get the get the ball into the hands of our of our skill playmakers. Obviously, Brock Bowers, huge factor. Um, but I think we we got to keep the running backs in mind as well. And then, um, you know, for Stetson Bennett, you know, do your thing, man. Do your thing, and that includes running it if the pass isn't there. Um, and then the I think the key in this game for him is to either have is to limit or have no head scratching moments. Right. Um, we've talked right. about how he's kind of good for good for one a game. If he could have zero, watch out. Um, that would be huge. Yeah. No, I. And then just limit limit Will and limit Will Anderson like we did in the first game. So. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest the biggest thing for for UGA is 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 got to be on the offensive side of the ball has got to be Stetson. I hesitate to say he has to play error free um, mm-hmm. because there obviously is some wiggle room for him to make errors as long as we balance those out on the defensive side, which I know we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, yeah, yeah. we need to be at worst net neutral on the offensive side of on the, on the error side of things. Um, yes. So, you know what that looks like is basically Stetson playing the best game that he's ever played against Alabama. Um, Each game that he's played, it's literally his worst game. Obviously we just talked about his record overall. Um, Alabama has got his number. Alabama has got Georgia's number. He's literally, it's literally the biggest, the biggest hurdle that he's got is, is getting over this hump with, with them. Um, There's no, if you find yourself under duress, take the sack, throw the ball away. Um, or put it in a position where it's only your guy that can catch a 50, 50 ball. Um, the, frankly, I would love to see him not throw 50, 50 balls. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, cause I don't like those odds. <laughs> um, I, what I would like to see early on and I'm, I'll, I'll break it down this way. So what I would like to see early is some early swing passes I want to see us com- make some short completions, quick completions. Not necessarily, you know, I don't necessarily think that we have to go out and score. Um, obviously, that's going to be very dependent on how Alabama responds. And again, we'll get to the defense in a second because, frankly, that's a huge part of what's going to happen in this game is if the defense shows up. Yep. Um, I think we'd be stupid not to admit that. 
Um, but we need the offensive line to play the the same way against Will Anderson as they did against Aiden Hutchinson um, mm-hmm. and Ajabo. Um, yeah. the The way that they played against Michigan was was fantastic. I don't know what happened in the month since you know <laughs> I don't know what happened in the month since the since the SEC championship game, but let's let's hope and pray that the offensive line has figured things out and they can continue that consistency that we saw in the Michigan game. Yeah. I do wonder um, if it's a, if that difference is a fully healthy and back to form Salier, you know, because the SEC yeah. championship game was his first game back. So that, that could be a big part. Right. Of it. Yeah. No, I, I, again, I think that the peaking at the right moment, as I mentioned in the last episode mm-hmm. um, is, is really important for us. Um, having them be somewhat hobbled um, at some key, key areas, I think is, is going to be important as well. Um, again, early on, I'd like to see us swing the ball out to keep their linebackers honest, because if they're able to shut down our perimeter play, um, whether it be in the running game and or the passing game, depending on which way this is going to go. I think that if we were to look at the SEC championship game as a blueprint um, both teams are going to try to make the quarterback beat you. Um, yeah. Right. Bama is going to basically sit back, which is basically what they've done against Stetson the entire time is make Stetson beat you. Um, he, other than I, I heard David Green, David Green had a, had an interview earlier this week on, on the radio and I can't remember which station it was. I think it was Chuck and Churn off or something, but, um, but he mentioned that you know it, it, whenever he whenever he talks about the quarterback position, I tend I tend to try to listen. Him and Aaron Murray are two guys that I like to listen to when they talk about our quarterbacks. Um, he was pretty complimentary of how Stetson played in the SEC championship game, outside of like five or six plays, right. two of those being interceptions, one of which was a pick six, um, some ill advised plays that he had, like outside of five or six plays and he was right. And, you know, outside of five, six plays, he played pretty good. He played really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we can eliminate those errors from the quarterback position, um, I think that, you know, we're in a much different, it's a different ball game. Um, so what I'd like to see is settle into the game, quick, quick passes out to the perimeter, get, get Brock Bowers involved, get their linebackers playing honest. They can't have everybody pinned back and, you know, just dialing up blitzes on on Stetson and being able to contain everything else outside. Um, I don't necessarily think that we have to have a big game from the from the running back core, um, but it certainly wouldn't hurt. One of the things that I saw from Cincinnati when when they played, I mean, the the, the final score of the Cincinnati game was, you know, yeah, the score looked looked bad, but I was talking I was talking with you earlier, like I mean. They were they were within if if they go down so Alabama marches down the field and scores um, Cincinnati yeah. marched down the field and got into the red zone they got into like the inside the ten yard line and ended up having to kick a field goal if they score a touchdown there it's ten seventeen at halftime um, right. versus Alabama which is a very different game in my opinion um, it was a one score game all the way through the fourth quarter until Bama was able to pull away at the end. That's where the points started piling on was in the fourth quarter. If we have them at 17 points in the fourth quarter, that is a, I mean, I love our chances to win if we can hold Bama to 17 points to the fourth quarter. I mean, shoot, if we hold them to the the final score that they had against Cincinnati, um, I like our chances. I mean, you yeah. saw Williams was hurt. You know, you saw a couple of their offensive linemen go out. Like they were Bryce Young looked completely like un Heisman like. <laughs> yeah, um, yep. that's the thing with them, right? It's like it gets back to the whole like you know we, we saw again the what's the outlier for Georgia, right? Um, same thing with Bama. They've been up and down all year, and their one game that everything was perfect. <laughs> was the SEC championship game, right? Like, you know, it was our worst game and it was their best game. Uh, and those two things obviously did not uh, match up well together. Um, 
do you want to switch over to to the defense? Because I feel like we're kind of we're kind of bleeding into that. We can. Yeah, we can I was just about to say that. I was about yeah. to say that might be a good caveat to to switch to the defense. But um, yeah. you know, are there are there other things that you're you're looking for on the offensive side, Jim? Like the only thing is for me, the only thing that popped into my mind was if we get behind, like I, it's on Munkin, right? Like because again. I, the, you know, both times we played Alabama with Munkin as the offensive coordinator, once we got behind the play calling changed significantly. Um, I was about to say drastically, but I'll say significantly, like the plays that he was calling changed, uh, to an area that I didn't like, like he started to press. Um, so I would like, you know, if we get behind, I'd like to see Munkin have, you know, you know, composure, right, is a big Kirby word. I'd like to see Munkin keep composure um, and continue to stick to what works and not uh, so much chase points. Um, and, and But, again, that leads – that again, that kind of leads us to the defense, right? But unless there's anything else for you. but um, you There, know, yeah, there is a couple of things. Okay. I, do, I, do have, I do have a couple of things that I wanted to highlight as well from the, our offensive side. Okay. Um, you, you actually, kudos to you. You're the one that pointed this out to me. But you want to talk about the the unbalanced line with Bowers? Oh uh, well, full disclosure, I got that from Graham and Josh. <laughs> I, watched, <laughs> I watched Dog Sports Live this week, uh, which obviously shout out to those guys. Always, I know. always no, shout uh, out. No, no surprise that we love those guys. Um, <laughs> but so they had uh, their Orange Bowl review. They used the all twenty two footage. Uh, which was awesome. So you could see all 22 players in every play they looked at. So uh, probably my favorite dog sports live I've ever watched uh, that. I'm going to, I will say that was a part of it. Um, but uh, I think actually it was Josh. They called it out and you know, Graham walked through the play uh, on the first touchdown pass to Bowers. Uh, you know, Bowers was basically lined up as a, an eligible tackle. Um, so, you know, he was the second player over from the center. It was an unbalanced line. We had, uh, like two tackles to the right. And then Bowers was Brock Bowers was the left tackle. Um, so I think that confused uh, Michigan, you know, um, Munkin called a great game, man. It, th- that was a, a great thing. A couple of plays before that, um, when I think it was like second and short or third and short, uh, we, we came out of a timeout and flipped everyone, right? Like everyone went in motion and Michigan's defense was totally confused. You could tell they were manned up on guys and everyone was flipping around, you know, had them confused. Um, so he definitely threw some, some wrinkles in, uh, for Michigan. Yeah. So yeah. You know, does he have anything else, uh, up his sleeve for Alabama? So yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we saw the halfback pass. We saw yeah. a lot, yeah. there was a lot of action out of the three tight end bunch set, which yeah. we had a lot of success with and frankly, like sets up nicely for us to stay away from, uh, from Anderson, Mm-hmm. Um, you know, talking about containing Anderson is, you know, if you can, if you can set things up on the outside like that is, is nice. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I, we, we joke about this. We joked about this. Uh, what was it? It was, it was 2019. I feel like, you know, everybody, each game that came along, you know, we had all of these beleaguered wins and it was like, we just kind of we're sleepwalking our way through the season and we're all saying, man, Kirby's saving things for the saving it for the, for the end. Like he's saving something it's like, right, holy, right. holy shit. We were saving some stuff because we had, <laughs> we had stuff that we hadn't seen all season long on the offense and look, it worked. Yeah. So yep. what else, what else does the mad scientist have up his sleeve? <laughs> yes. That's a good question. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out if there's anything else there. All right, that's 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 how we'll okay. segue. Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, so for if we as we transition into uh, you know their offense, our defense, um, again for me, it's really like the return to form, right? The, the, the <laughs> we want to see the defense that we've seen for we've seen thirteen times and not once, um, because like we said it looks like a totally different team. Um, you know, keep it simple, right? It seems like we changed. We what well, we now know there were some scheme changes for that game. Not sure that was the best idea. Maybe go back to what was working. We had said all season that they had simplified the defense for these players, let the players play, get back to that. Um, and then, like, 
you know, something like, again, watching back from what I have rewatched of the championship game, you know, it felt you know, we would said things like we didn't get pressure on Bryce Young. And I think that's, that's not exactly accurate. Like we got no sacks. There was pressure, but we never got him to the ground. Like how many times did he Houdini his way? You keep saying it's the backyard football stuff, right? Like get the kid to the ground. If we get to Bryce Young, you've got to get to get him to the ground, right? Um, or at least like get a hit on him, right? I mean, make him think twice, you know? Um, if we could get a good lick on him, that would be amazing. And you think about the one time we did when he was running on the field, he fumbled, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, let's, he's not, He's not a huge kid, right? I mean, let's let, let, I don't know, let's, let's make him have that in the back of his head. That would be huge. Um, the other things, though, are you know one of the things that made us feel good about the original matchup was the question, the fact that Brian Robinson Jr. was questionable. Like we didn't even think he was going to play, right? And he he, yeah. he did. He didn't have gaudy numbers, but he had a really good game. Right, like he had some really important, meaningful yards in that game. Um, the dude just ran for two hundred and four yards against Cincinnati. <laughs> um, you know, he's he was like Mister Everything in that game for them. So uh, he's clearly back to form. I don't think you're. We're. I don't. Sounds like they're not so much worried about his health anymore. Um, so again, you know, like we said, right, shut down the run, make the quarterback beat you. That's that's always what we're trying to do. Um, it'll be, I think it'll be a little bit tougher to do that this week, just with his health. Although we do have the questions on the offensive line. Um, and then the other thing, other big difference, obviously from last game to this game is Mechie, right? So Mechie injured, um, you know, unfortunate injury, hate, hate to see anyone go down with an injury like that. But you know, the, the reality is he will not be playing this game. Um, but you know, of course, and true, like, Alabama fashion, uh, their leading receiver <laughs> in the Cotton Bowl was actually his replacement. Um, so uh, he's a freshman from Miami, uh, Ja'Cory Brooks. Um, he had four catches for 66 yards in a touchdown. Um, although I think most of that was on one play. I think he had a 44-yard touchdown reception um, in the Cotton Bowl, uh, but he was their leading receiver. So someone to watch for, you know, who's going to kind of step up in, in Mechie's absence, and that's definitely – um, one of those guys. Yeah. Um, uh, Robinson is definitely the X factor right now. Um, that yeah. said, I, I, I don't know. I just don't see, I don't see him racking up a ton of yards this game. Um, you know, I could be wrong. Um, the game plan will, will likely stem from, this is this is how if I if I'm Dan Lanning, this is how I would I would dial it up. Like you're not going anywhere on the ground. Both you, mm-hmm. Bryce Young, and you, Robinson. I want you to beat me through the air. Um, I actually think that we match up pretty good, uh, receiver for receiver, all along their offensive front, with a fully healthy secondary that UGA has. Um, Chris Smith being back in, I think that being fully healthy across the board is going to be a big difference for our secondary. Yeah. Um, because Chris Smith wasn't the same. He wasn't the same player in the, in the SEC championship game. He just wasn't. Um, no, he he's wasn't. had a month. He's, he's had a month to get healthier. Um, I mentioned and it a half again. Of, and a half of football, right? Uh, where it's, where right. Let's be, again, let's be thankful that his targeting was in the first half. Uh, so that he doesn't have to miss any of this game. Uh, sorry, he right. won't. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was texting with my my buddy. Is like, listen, I know that this is going to sound silly, but like, you guys were passing all over a secondary that was depleted, and frankly, you were passing all over a defense that was completely distracted and clearly, very clearly, was doing things that the film suggested that they should not do. And very clearly was doing things that we had not done all season long. Yep. Um, <laughs> again, it goes back to the conspiracy theorists. Like, <laughs> were we just were we just trying things out, just poking and prodding? Hey, let's run our our let's run our plan B against these guys from the outset and see what happens. Um, right. oh, okay, plan B didn't work. Let's run plan A in the national championship. Like, I right. definitely could see some some scenarios like that transpiring because what we see is is that 
if and and Cincinnati had some success. Like again, I mean, this yeah. the, the 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 win probability for Alabama was not into the nineties. Um, frankly, was you know below eighty percent for basically the entirety of the first half um, when the game was ten to three. Um, yeah. It was still 17 to 6 late in the third quarter. Uh, it's not until the fourth quarter that they finally start to pull away, um, putting the nail in the coffin. And frankly, I think that's just out talenting an, an undermanned and undergunned team. Um, they're not going to have that luxury in the national championship. So, what that looks like to me is, is that there's been 10 days since then. Anybody that got dinged up or banged up in that game has had 10 days to get better. Um, they clearly have question marks. Uh, and frankly, like what could potentially pop up between now and then? Uh, Mechie is not coming back. And I think that's really the big, the big thing here for our defense is that we no longer have to worry about Mechie. Again, I think we match up nicely all yep. along the secondary with the exception of Williams. Um, Williams was by and large a non-factor in 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 the cotton bowl so i'm hoping that the game film that, that cincinnati has um that we have from cincinnati on how to make sure that we contain him which frankly don't let him get loose um <laughs> like, we don't saw leave him not don't leave him not covered like we did yeah. in the SEC championship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you and I saw that from, from the SEC championship. If you see, it's, it's very similar to our, our last episode where if you see James Cook lined up on a linebacker, yeah, yeah. we're telling every, everybody in the stadium knows we're throwing it to James Cook. Um, if Williams is running in motion, nine times out of ten, the ball is looking for Williams in that scenario. Yeah. Um, if if he's running a slant nine times out of ten, Young is looking for Williams in the slant. Like if we can keep him from doing damage like that, um, I think that if we can contain Williams, that good things are going to happen to us because I just don't I don't see Robinson racking up two hundred yards on this UGA defense. Um, yeah, no, that's not, yeah, he, yeah, he's not going to do that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that's what I'm saying. Like, if if I'm landing, I'm dialing up. I mean, I would hesitate uh, hesitate to say like we should have a spy on Young the entire game, um, mm-hmm. but just don't lose contain. Like, don't lose contain. Yeah. If you lose contain against Bryce Young, we're going to lose this game um, yeah. because yeah. it is going to get to backyard football. You saw that with Cincinnati. There were multiple plays where he broke loose and either made a made a good pass play or he just 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 flipped it out to Robinson and Robinson ran for 30, 40 yards on an, on an option play that clearly wasn't a designed option play. Um, he yeah. did that against us at the SEC championship. Um, bring him down. Cincinnati was able to bring him down. There were multiple plays where like young broke loose and Cincinnati yeah. was able to bring him down. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just, I, I just the the defense needs to show up, and we talked about this on the last episode. But Dan Lanning no longer be hopefully being focused. We had the airing of grievances, the festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> yes, um, yes. We had yes. we had we've had a come to Jesus with everybody. Bernie's back in the fold. We got Chris Smith. We got you know Pickens is here. We're having special meetings with JT Daniels and Pickens. Maybe there's a plan B for us if things don't go go to plan, which I'm hoping that there is a plan B because that would be the ultimate um, Alabama Bama is, you know, if Stetson isn't getting the job done, we pivot to Daniels and, you know, it'd not still only be do we surprise, I'd still be surprised if that happens, but yes. Sorry. I, I agree. I agree. But if we're talking about like the, the last game where it's the second half and, we're down 14 points and we're clearly not getting anything done. And then Stetson throws a pick six. Like at that point, I'm hoping, you know, let's say if history yeah. repeats itself and we find ourselves in a similar scenario where we're down 21 points in the third quarter, like we literally have nothing to lose. Um, I'm with you. If we end so, up in that same, yeah, if that same scenario happens again, the switch would happen. I agree with that. Yeah. 
Yep. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with with it on the on the offensive side. Like Brock Bowers needs to have a big game. Which, by the way, um, he's 140 yards, I believe. He's like 140 yards short of a thousand yard season. Mm. Yeah, that would be amazing. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that he's going to get it, but that would be right. pretty awesome. That would be. That would be. Keep Anderson out of the back out, out of the backfield. Keep, yes. keep Anderson out of out of out of our backyard. Contain yeah. him. Um, yeah, o- offensive line play play well. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, and frankly, Jordan Davis. Like, I, I hope to not see Jordan Davis just not uh, not caring. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know how else to describe it. <laughs> I, I this actually, I'm glad you brought that up uh, because there was definitely something going on. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people have. Um, there have been some theories that he was sick, that there were a lot of guys that were sick, like flu or something was going on SEC championship game. Um, I, you know, Bama was running their offense uh, and not, you know, like they were running successive plays without substituting, which made it such that we could not substitute to match. So that will be something to watch uh, here again this time, right? Like is Alabama able to do that? Are they able to, run these plays uh, to keep our same defensive personnel on the field, you know, um, for the amount of time for them to get tired. Cause that was definitely part of what they did in, in game. So, so, and so with, with that as a caveat, like it, it, it's a chicken and the egg scenario, right? So mm-hmm. you're, what you're saying is, is that Alabama was running their offense in such a way that allowed us to not sub. That's not the first time that we've had that scenario pop up this season. I mean, we played against yeah. Tennessee. Obviously, the talent's yeah. different. But, like, that adversity has been there before. What is the difference in that scenario? The difference is, is that the offense was getting the job done. So, like, mm. yes, yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree that the defense needs to show up. They didn't show up in the last game. But, frankly, the offense wasn't moving the ball quite as effectively and – as you know, methodically, I mean, they were pretty. I feel like they were pretty efficient. I mean, we had some well, explosive. Had that, we had some explosive had huge, plays. They had that huge lull, right? They had a huge lull. Exactly. End of the second, end of the second quarter, and then basically the third quarter, uh, the offense kind of disappeared. Uh, yeah. And then, like, and even like by the time the defense kind of showed up and started to figure things out, it took the offense too long to get back into the swing of things in the first game. So. And I'm glad you brought that up. Complimentary football, right? Like that's what Georgia football has been all year, right? The the offense feeds off the defense and vice versa. So, yes, I'm glad you brought that up about the quarters. Um, John, since I I don't know if he's tweeted it or not or whatever with the dog dispatch, but like um, John tweets, you know, kind of put together a, a bit of a chart that kind of showcased, you know, versus other opponents versus Alabama, how we did quarter by quarter. And Mm -hmm. the one glaring, like the one glaring difference, like we're pretty, pretty even, I mean, quarter by quarter with what we were doing against Alabama, the one glaring problem was the second quarter against Alabama where they got, that's where Alabama did their damage to us was in the second quarter. Um, If, if you take, if you, even just like frustrate them in the second quarter, it's a different ball game. Um, so yeah, I, I think that having having the offense continue to keep the defense off the field, helping them rest, because I assume that Alabama will probably try to do the same thing. Um, they'll probably start to, especially with a healthy Robinson, I'm sure that they're going to try to. There'll probably be some poking and prodding, like, hey, can you can you maintain this for four quarters? We're going to like just dial up Robinson on top of you over and over again. Can you, can you, can you keep up? Right. Um, and I, if we can, if we can, can, can sustain drives and, and punch them in, like I think the stat in the SEC championship, how many, how many trips to the red zone do, that we had? We had like three or four trips to the red zone at zero points or something like that. Right. Right. That can't happen. That can't happen. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I think I do just want to add that I think, uh, you know, special teams could be uh, very important in this game. Uh, We will be indoors, so no swirling winds uh, to watch out for, that's for sure. Um, But, uh, you know, Kamara has been a weapon all year, um, and he had a good game 
punting against Alabama, even in the SEC championship game. Um, so that could be a big, big factor. And then, uh, obviously, you know, uh, jackpot, keep doing his thing. Um, and you know, the re- return game, uh, you know, I think that could be, you know, that's something to watch out for. Um, we haven't had a big punt return in, in a while. Um, uh, although, you know, it would be great to see Alabama punting. <laughs> this game was so the last one. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I feel like, uh, special teams can be a pretty big factor in this one. So, um, but you know, nothing specific to call out for us because we've, we've been pretty good at it all year. So more of a kind of, uh, keep doing what we've been doing. Um, yep. Uh, was there something else though? Because no, not on special like, teams, much. not on special sure. teams. The only thing I'll say is that I, I imagine that every Alabama fan out there had a, like, uh, they were, they were months inning pretty hardcore when their kicker missed that field goal in the, in the cotton bowl. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping yeah. that they have a similar experience in the national championship. For sure. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, you want to hit the listener questions? Uh, y- the only, only thing that I'll say that, I, that we didn't talk about, I know you were, you were Oscar momenting me with the timing here, but the only thing that I'll say, Alabama lost a turnover battle against Cincinnati. Cincinnati played error free the entire game. They were in the game in the fourth quarter. Um, if if Georgia can play that way, if we win the turnover battle and we're in the game in the fourth quarter, I, I, I it's it's going to be a beautiful night for you and your dad um, <laughs> in Indianapolis. Nice, nice. Um, I like it. Yeah, that's that's the only that's the only thing I'll say is like. Alabama lost the turnover battle against Cincinnati. Can can Georgia replicate that? Right, right. Okay. All right. Let's hit the listener questions. Uh, let's do it. We have a we have a my got a podcast first. Uh, the first resp- reply to our question tweet was actually from a Bama fan. Uh, <laughs> so you know, CT uh, came in with a one word reply of trash. So. Congratulations, CT. That was some great interaction uh, from the opposing opposing fan base. Uh, I mean, so we'll five five minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty that's, quick. That's, that's quick on the draw. <laughs> it was pretty quick, and it's not somebody that uh, you know I follow or something. I'm not, not familiar with this with this person, so I thought that was kind of funny. Anyways, we'll move on. Um, First one, dog not bone. a question. That's dog bone. That's dog bone material. Oh, that reminds me. That reminds <laughs> me. You know, last week uh, when we tweeted at the dog bones, someone replied because uh, you know we we use hundred hundred was kind enough to make us a nice uh, you know, dog bone helmet graphic for this season. Um, and there's a black dog bone in there. And you know, Ooh. I don't know if you remember, like with Rick, the black dog bones were for academic achievement. That's what that was ah. for. <laughs> so someone right, actually right. Re- re- replied and said who is the academic dog bone for? Uh, and, and like Hunter was like, you know, it's for me. Um, so I think this week we're going to give the academic dog bone to CT, the Bama fan, because he was able to read the tweet. So congratulations, CT, Bama fan, able to read. <laughs> All right. So we'll move nice. on. We'll move on. Uh, first one. I got, my camo, I got my camo hat on and everything for that one. Uh, nice. Uh, <laughs> Move on uh, for Dwight, uh, Duda, Duda dog one. Um, not a question. He just gave an opinion. He said, uh, my opinion, all gas, no breaks on offense, aggressive play calling, regardless of score, uh, until the fourth quarter and time management with the lead field goals is a last resort. We need touchdowns to beat Bama and we need to keep our edge and momentum. Go dogs, unfinished business, run it back. Amen. Dwight, uh, could not agree more. All right, Amen. Jason Huggins, Hug Dog 18. Fill in the blank. It all boils down to this. Georgia wins the national championship if blank. Um, and what I like is that Jason now knows that you're going to say this, so he just went ahead and gave his answer uh, to us. <laughs> so he said, uh, you know, he said his fill in the blank is Georgia wins the national championship if we forget who we are playing and focus on playing our absolute best on every play. We do that. I like our chances. See you in Indy. And we both we, we we both drank to that, Jason. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> we were, Amen. Amen. The, little, the slight pause there was both of us just like, yeah, <laughs> cheers, <laughs> go dogs. Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Again, yeah, I mean, I mean, my I've already said I don't, 
I'll just say one more time. Again, the team that that we've seen 13 times, that team shows up, right? Um, right. That team shows up. That's it for me. So. I'll be I'll be a little bit more explicit in my answer. Um, okay. I've got if if Stetson Bennett throws zero interceptions mm-hmm. and we keep them under 30 points. Okay. I think I like you, 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 you kind of called that out. Like I, I gotta, I gotta give you a hat tip on that one. I was like, you know what? It's, it's, that yeah. makes, that makes sense. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's make it a family affair. Hambone Hampton Huggins is up next. Uh, how many sacks and turnovers does the dog defense need to get? I'm three. I'm thinking three sacks into pick and, I had my answer in my head already, and I think you basically already said this earlier. I'm not sure that there is a specific number for our defense. I I think the key is that the turnover battle is neutral, right? Like if Mm -hmm. if everything is matched. So yeah, that's you know. So if we don't turn the ball, if we don't turn the ball over, I don't know that we necessarily need to get a turnover. If if for what that's worth, it would be great. Obviously, it would be great. Obviously, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. It. Ultimately, it's going to come down to how we play. Like, I don't give a shit about how Alabama plays. As long as we play within ourselves and within what we have at, at our disposal, like you said, in the 13 games that we've played where we played to our potential and basically blew the doors off of everybody, if that team shows up, if we control what we can control and control the ball, don't turn the ball over on our side of things, I think that we – I mean – the point spread is the point spread for a reason. Um, I think that Vegas for, hates us for some reason, but at the same time, like it, they're yes. probably not wrong. Like, I mean, if you looked at this, like I, I know I sent the text to to the text thread, but like um, averaging out some of the resources that we have at our disposal, like if you average out some of the different score lines that I've seen out there from like four or five different like ex quote unquote experts. Um, Odd Shark is is one that we use that has a predicted score. Like some of these betting sites have these predicted scores that you can kind of average it out. And like, I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, we're yeah. talking about two, three point margin. So like yeah. if we find ourselves, and this is what I was texting my Alabama buddy was like, if we find ourselves in a 2017 matchup or a 2012 type matchup, I actually like w- will enjoy that game. Like I, mm-hmm. it, it'll, it'll stress me the heck out. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. I would much prefer that game than the SEC championship game where it's like, okay, you guys are kicking the crap out of us. This is this is not fun for a number of reasons, but like most of which is because this is not the team that you guys should be playing. Like you're not playing Georgia. You're playing this like Bizarro Dogs or whatever. I so I had the uh, like what it's not what they do. It's what we do. Uh, exactly. I had that thought in my head earlier today. I think you've been reading my mind. So, um, and that one on that one. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, so, okay. Uh, next one, uh, Angela Delilah Puckett. Um, she checks in, says, what is it going to be like to play in Colt stadium? Will it give an advantage to either team? Did they prepare for the game any differently? Um, so this is the one, uh, I think you had some thoughts on this one around the turf specifically, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we alluded to this in the, some of the other episodes and I know we talked about it on the text thread, but like um, this was one of the things that I saw and I realized that it's really dumb to like, look at this and, you know, uh, intuitively like whatever, dude, like we all have to play on the same surfaces, like whatever. Yeah. The reality is, is that the two college football playoffs victories that the university of Georgia has have been played on natural grass turf. Um yeah. Similar blends, and uh, not not to get all dad on everybody, but like similar <laughs> blends to what's in Sanford Stadium. <laughs> right, like right. the the same turf that's in the Rose Bowl is the same turf that's in Sanford Stadium, and I believe it's a sim a similar blend um, at Hard Rock, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. But anyway, natural grass turf. Right. Um, Mercedes Benz, as we all know, is artificial turf. Mm-hmm. Um, the Cotton Bowl was played on artificial turf. Um, right. Unfortunately for us, Indianapolis Colts play in an artificial turf stadium. So if you were to look at an advantage to Alabama, or an advantage for one of the teams based on just like atmosphere and stadium location, like the turf at 
Indianapolis Stadium has got to be a, an advantage to Alabama because we have yet to win a game against these guys on artificial turf. Mm. Period. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, frankly, uh, let's see. What uh, we we played uh, the Iron Bowl or sorry the um, uh, Birmingham or not Birmingham Tuscaloosa. They they have natural grass turf too. So frankly, we haven't beat them on any <laughs> on yeah. any, any any natural grass surface. But yeah, the I was three, thinking. We just don't play right. well on turf. Well, I mean, we did. So we did. Let's, we could think about that a little bit. I mean, we did beat Auburn. Obviously, obviously, a lot of different guys. But 2017 SEC championship, we won. Uh, hey, this year we did beat Georgia Tech on turf. Uh, they don't have grass; <laughs> they, they switch some turf, so they've got that going for us. That's so, but yeah, true. I, I think that, that is the main thing because otherwise, you know, indoors uh, to keep the you know the Indiana elements away. Um, so I, I would think that would pretty much be it. The um, swirling okay. winds. I mean, the, the, the sound. Winds, yeah. Obviously, the sound obviously would be you mm-hmm. know, something. But yeah, uh, how, what's the I don't what's the capacity at, at Indianapolis versus Mercedes Benz? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, let's uh, Google that while I read this yeah. next one, and then yeah. uh, we can come back to it. I because I, I really yeah, want to get to this next one because this next this next question uh, comes from my I assume a, a long time listener, first time caller. Uh, at Powell John T on Twitter <laughs> says, Can I ask a question for my own show? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. Sorry. Man, I'm going to have to edit the heck out of this episode. Uh, we've won the for, natty. For reference, it definitely didn't say the full emphasis <laughs> F. It, it was definitely F bleeped. F it was it Twitter F bleeped. F dash, F dash, dash. <laughs> okay. So here's the setup. We've won the nat. We've won the natty. I'm going to, I'm going to read as you typed. We've won the natty. <laughs> Jim Wood PMP. John Tweet Sports. Dogs Forever. Hey, Michael Smith. Dog Out West and company are out and about afterwards. What kind of cake, bourbon, and cigars are going down? Um, so, um, uh, and I meant to have the soundbite ready for this, but I don't have it. So instead of cake, I would actually have a, a Cinnabon, um, you know, hat tip. <laughs> Friend of the show, George Foster, because <laughs> winning the Natty would be sweeter than a Cinnabon. Sweeter uh, than a Cinnabon. Uh, and That's then for the, for the bourbon, uh, I mean, apparently I'm drinking what John is bringing because holy cow, he posted the picture <laughs> of his lineup. Uh, so something from from his his list. Um, I you know. I don't know. There was a couple. I think there were like multiple Willers, so potentially one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then He's cigars. Some, that's a good lineup. You know, cigars. I, I might just go Munson style and say I'm smoking what you're giving me because apparently <laughs> when we hear that's what Munson used to do. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Um, so yeah. So yeah. So I don't. Know. I think that was a question for me to answer. I don't know. Could you? You can ask your own question, but can you answer your own question? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to really work on that exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 this is this, there are no rules. There are no <laughs> rules where we live, Jim. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm living. The reason I asked that question just to give some context to the folks listening, and if you weren't around with us uh, for the Clemson game, but um, <laughs> after the Clemson win, there was a lot of revelry in Charlotte, and we were at the cigar bar, and we were drinking bourbon and smoking cigars. Until it was, you know, fairly late, like, I guess, like, too late for Charlotte, um, <laughs> for Charlotte, but... It was too late for me, because I went home. <laughs> you went home. <laughs> I was tired. It was, I was tired. It was definitely too late for you. Oh. Um, but uh, Charlotte, like, shut down. Like, the food established... Uh, the food situation in Charlotte was not prepared for a dog's victory mm-hmm. um, to the wee hours of the morning. Um which I'm guessing probably Indianapolis probably isn't going to be over either. So uh, the only thing that they get, they, they were able to get to eat was, was a, a cake. <laughs> I don't even yeah. remember what, what, what cake it was. Uh, yeah. I can't, I can't remember what kind of cake it was, but if it were me, I would definitely go for red velvet cake, Nice red velvet cake. Weller. Uh, I suggested Weller one Oh seven, um, which as I alluded to earlier, we were, I'm drinking that right now, but, um, which is the red label, or Weller 12, which is the black label, so red and black. Nice. Um, those would be two bourbons, and I am actually going to be drinking both of those during the game. 
um, as well. Um, well, the, I'm saving the Weller 12 for, for the victory, obviously. But um, the, yeah, and this, as far as the cigars go, like, uh, I don't know. I suggested the Weller Cohiba, which uh, John and uh, Bobby have talked about a good bit. Uh, in my head, instinctively, it sounds amazing, but it's probably <laughs> way too, it's probably way too out of my league. For for those, because I'm like more of like a basic cigar person, because like, um, right. yeah, Macanudos and something mild for me. <laughs> right. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Uh, that's good. So yeah, so uh, you know, it was great to finally get a question from a longtime listener, uh, Pal John. <laughs> so thank you. Thank I'll, you. If you're I'll listening, hang I'll hang up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Zach is up next. Uh, SC Dog eight sixty four. All right, this is, this is lengthy, so let me get to it. I'm going to read this. I'm not expecting a win, but something feels different about this one, fellas. Anything you have saved or ready to do to celebrate this win, like the moment it's over, after the game, or later on. Personally, I'm going to go yell in the streets, and then I'm getting a tattoo that I promised I would years ago if we won. Also, this game will be for all Georgia fans and the fans that came before us and that are no longer with us anymore. Uh Oh yeah, and then he let's bleeping eat. I'll do it as he typed it. Uh, go dogs. Um, I want to go back to the first part. I, I have some advice, SC dog. Um, don't try to protect yourself by not expecting to win. Um, that's the attitude I took in the national championship game in 2017, uh, and it didn't make me feel any better when we lost. Um, so mm. you know, like you're either a leader, or you're not. Dare to be great. Uh, let's do this. So that's the first thing. As for like the moments it's over, are there things that I have? There's, I do, I don't want to say them. <laughs> I do have something that I'm, that I plan to do. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to say it. Uh, everyone will, everyone, if you're listening, you're going to know. Uh, if you, if you interact with us, you'll, you'll know what my thing was. Um, I'll just say that. Uh, but it, I, I will say this, like, uh, I'll be with my dad. Uh, he's the reason I'm a Georgia fan. He got me into it uh, as a baby. <laughs> uh, so the first thing I'm, I will do is hug my dad. So uh, it'll be, it would, uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's the kind of thing like I can't even imagine it. So it's hard to imagine. I can't, I can't, this is like, I'm, I'm like sitting here waiting. I'm like waiting to give my answer to this. Like how do, how do yeah. I, how do I follow up? How do I follow Sorry. up that? Like, Sorry. that's like a mic drop. That's like a mic drop. Which that's kind of what I like. I, I'll say it. I'll say it. Like in my, when we were talking about this, and you were like, yeah, "I'm going to the game with my dad." It's like, "Oh, it's a father son or pair." Like, like I know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know right. how much that means for both of you guys. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super yeah. jealous. First of all, but like, right. second of all, like I get it. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I originally started this because, like, no, I wasn't a, I wasn't a Georgia fan. Like, I was just trying to piss my dad off by <laughs> for someone else. But I eventually grew up and, you know, put away childish things and came to my senses and went to the university right. just like my dad did. And so here we are. Um, yeah. So I get it. I totally get it. Um, yeah. I know that my dad and I will be texting and we'll be t- conversing uh, throughout. But um, now that I think about it, I might try to – force him to come up he's not a big traveler but um yeah but my saving that i have is i actually went to a fireworks display i purchased fireworks for the new year's eve um Mm -hmm. celebration i was actually expecting to like shoot fireworks off for michigan but it was such a blowout that it was kind of like eh (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sa- I'm gonna save these for the next one. <laughs> I very I very much had a Kirby Smart thing. Like now that I'm thinking Ooh. about it, like I actually had a Kirby Smart mentality. I was like, nice. You know what? Like I'm not going to shoot these off. I'm going to save them. The season's not over yet. Clearly, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I have I have uh, eighteen I have eighteen mortars that I can shoot off um, after we win, which. There are three houses in my neighborhood that I may stop by, depending on how much bourbon I have to drink. 
um, after the game <laughs> just to raise just to raise Kane a little bit. <laughs> Not so much wake my family up, but wake their families up. <laughs> right, right. Uh, that's awesome. uh, yeah, so that's that's what nice. I've got. I've also got some cigars yeah. that I've been holding on to. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Uh, 51 to 7, GATA. After our dogs get a safety to win 30 to 28, do you think a gump will try to kill a tree in Athens? Uh, I'm actually going to say no, so, because I, uh, I I don't see that being dupli- replicated again. I certainly hope not. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I don't think we're going to get a safety. I don't think that anybody's <laughs> going to kill trees. Um, yes. They have they have multiple years of success. When did when did that happen? When did the Harvey Harvey wine not the Harvey wine <laughs> <laughs> whatever the Harvey Upstein up up Updike 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 that's what it was. Yes. Um, when did when did all that go down? I feel like that was a long time ago. <laughs> it, yeah, uh, was it the was it the kick six or was it before that? Yeah, which was like was, years ago, I mean, right? Auburn. Like, I mean, they've yeah, got multiple six. national championships since then. Yeah, they, they yeah, don't yeah, care about it. Yeah, that. yeah. Kick six was uh, twenty fourteen. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, or no, no, no. Sorry, twenty thirteen. I will say, I will say, there was a follow up to this question, which I was like, man, that's a really obscure fact. Someone mentioned like an actual tree that they definitely didn't want, like. Yeah, they said that like the forestry school or was gonna would like kill the person or something like that uh, yeah that was that was interesting because I, I like i i have no idea what you're talking about and i went to school there <laughs> right right i might yeah, have to do some like googling I, on that one that was that was yeah, like a late that was a late a late tweet i feel like it was like right before we were recording i feel like i need to pull that up so it was is brian holly uh at underscore brian holly h-o-l-l-e-y underscore um, he, his, his reply there is not sure, but if they try to kill the Royal Polonia tree next to the bridge, the entire forestry school will hunt them down. Amazing. So yes, that's, I that feel is, like that the, is quite a specific answer. Yeah. I don't know what that tree is either. <laughs> are, we bad? are we bad? Are we bad Georgia fans? Because we don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? You, you, this speaks to the fact that, um, you know, I'm I'm up to date on my on my um, turf. Mm, um, so the turf true. grass management, which my uh, my freshman year roommate was a turf grass management major, um, and talked about the the ag guys having uh, like custom grass in their in their in their dorms and stuff. I imagine that the forestry school is similar, right? Um, right. Okay, so the Royal Polonia tree. Yeah, okay. Are you actually looking this up? I am. So I, <laughs> the description that I could give to this thing is like, did you do you remember as a kid like watching uh, the um, the Land Before Time? Yes. So the leaf, the leaves, the leaves that are off those trees were like ginormous, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the tr- the leaves off the royal pollution. <laughs> The tree is are are basically like the tree stars from <laughs> from the land before time. Like they're huge. Amazing. These are massive. Like these are the biggest leaves I've ever seen in my life. Love it. Which, uh, by the way, like I have a love hate relationship with trees and leaves, but that's that's a that's a that's a, that's a dad's that's a dad story for another time. We have gone we have gone sufficiently off the rails. We're going to move to the next question. <laughs> So off it was. Uh, okay, I told you the barrel proof. That's true. Fletcher Proctor, will the parade go down Lumpkin, Millage, Broad, or Washington? And I've got this one because here's what it's going to do: it's going to start on Washington, hang a left on Lumpkin, and then a left on Broad. Uh, it's going to make the loop, kind of like the uh, the homecoming parade. That, that's that's my answer. Is it the homecoming parade? Okay. Okay. That's what the homecoming parade does. He's saying if we I, win, wh- where is the parade going to go? Listen, Jim, I, the parade is going to come from the airport, and it's going to go up 85, and it's mm. going to go all the way to Athens. And you know what's going to happen when we get right around, say, like the 5th Street to 14th Street area? Mm. It's going to slow down. 
in front of Techwood. It's going to slow down in front of that 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 trade school area. Like it's going to slow down. <laughs> right, right, that's, right. That's exactly right. what's going to happen. Uh, let's see, John Michael D. In light of the new movie about Kurt Warner's story, when does the Stetson Bennett the Fourth movie documentary happen? Do y'all think the dogs have to win for it to happen? He says he thinks a win makes it a bit quicker, but it will happen either way. Uh, I think he needs to win uh, for it to happen, personally. Uh, you had a working title for the Sits of Bennett movie. I think it was simply The Walk-On. The Walk-On. That was yeah. that was my working like title. It. Yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> uh, all right. Alternative, uh, alter- alternative title would be The Mailman. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. Um, Aaron King, who makes the memorable play that wins us the game? My money is on King Kieris, which Aaron is just like, you know, he, he, he's setting it up perfectly for us. You know, the unofficial official wide receiver of my, my kind of podcast uh, w- would be perfect. Um, the memorable play, uh, I mean, with this team, I feel like it needs to be someone on defense, though, honestly. So I'm going to go with Nicobe Dean. You got anyone that comes to mind? Um, the the memorable play. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Stetson touchdown oh. to Brock Bowers. Amazing, that works. I'm all for that too. Yeah. Um, which, which, by the way, Aaron, you're you're speaking my love language here. Though these are these are these are basically words of affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> King uh, King Kieris, are you kidding me? On the last on the last preview episode, we're bringing up Kieris, who amazing. by and large, every everything we've heard is like a hundred percent for this game. Which he had a he had yeah. a catch that was an amazing catch that was wiped out by a penalty. Ugh. Okay, that's what I was about to bring it up. You brought it up. Yeah. Hold well <laughs> on. Um, all right. Next up, M Dubs. Hey, Michael Smith. What is the single best thing that could happen for Georgia during this game? And what is the single worst thing? Uh, his brother, Dogs Forever, responded and said, pick six. <laughs> also, pick six. <laughs> so, uh, which I, I don't know that I've got anything better than that. Um, I mean, I can come up with some better stuff than that. <laughs> um, I mean, I have one, but it's like, the, like do, do I want to say it? Uh, so here's the funny, I mean, it's awful, but uh similar to, i'm gonna go to the, to the similar device that dogs river used and say the backup quarterback comes into the game and the backup quarterback comes into the game <laughs> nice i'm that gonna go for, that was for josh <laughs> i think <laughs> uh, and so so then it's basically just like two backups just gunslinging <laughs> right 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 uh, the single best thing that could happen would be like three pick sixes. <laughs> <laughs> single sure. worst thing would be three pick sixes. <laughs> okay, so you've just tripled. Uh, uh, I, I'm tripling crazy. down. I'm triple. I'm uh, tripling you. All right. Uh, let's see. My dad chimes in. Uh, Frip dog. Our tickets are in our phones. Our parking pass is printed out. How many times will we check and make sure the parking pass is in the truck before we leave? Over under. So this is a joke because. We over the years, like when we were leaving to go to the game from my parents' house, we we used to always check like eighty five times to make sure we actually had the tickets. Now with the tickets not being physical, like they're on your phone, not as big of a deal. So we haven't had to do that so much. But we have a parking pass for the <laughs> national championship game that I already have printed out. So uh, you know, I don't know that you can set an over under enough high enough uh, for the number of times we'll be checking to make sure we have the parking pass. Even though I guess we could just print it out again when we get there, but still. We're still going to. I mean, I, I had I had a suggestion for him, Jim. Oh, oh what is it? It was take a picture of the print. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, you know, it's a PDF <laughs> attached to an email. That's what I'm saying. It's not the end of the world, but that's not going to okay. stop us because that's how. Okay. We do. That's okay. how. We do. That's just uh, that's just a little a little inside baseball on father son mentality. Right. Exactly. 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 <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. I'm the All same right, way. Got, I'm the same way. I've got the return to something. We're going to go do this a little bit different. So I hope you're ready for this one. (laughs) 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 
the return of the soundboard. I finally got to work again. Okay. Uh, Coach Joe Bills, over unders, Georgia rushing yards, over under 185. That's a lot. Uh, uh, so. That's a I'm gonna say under. lot of rushing yards. I'm going to go under. My instinct was under. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm still going to. I'm still going to stick with under. But like, we could approach that. Like we this could. is we're talking we're talking total rushing yards, right? So like, Georgia, yeah, yeah, Georgia rushing yards. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm still going to go. I'm, I'm going to stick with the under on that one. Okay, Wouldn't Georgia rushing. Out. Georgia rushing touchdowns, 1.5. I think I went over 2.5 last game, and we had zero. Um, I don't think yeah, we'll get right. blanked this game. Uh, I think 1.5 is a good number. I'm going to go under because I think it'll be one. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm going under. Okay. Uh, over under 225 Georgia passing yards. Uh, over. I'm going to go over as well. Uh, over under two and a half. Georgia passing touchdowns over agreed. Yeah, we're agreeing on everything. That's okay. Cause as we've, we no longer, I mean, uh, disagree, just disagree. The, the, no, the rationale gonna... there, the rationale there is like, we <laughs> did all of those everything. things. The last one. <laughs> exactly. Uh, over under one and a half sacks for Georgia. Our defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our defense getting one and a half sacks. Yep. Uh, Push. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna go. Oh, uh, I'm gonna go over, but I wouldn't be way over. I think this is a good line. I think you know one it's a good two. line. Yeah. <laughs> Push. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Uh, which which could happen technically? Think you need a half sack? Well, uh, a person could get a half sack. But. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, amazing. Um, Georgia forced turnovers over under one and a half. Under. Yeah. And I hate saying, to say it. I hate to say I know, it. I'm, it's it's going to be you. under. I'm with you. Um, and then let's see. Georgia third down conversion percentage over under 50%. That's where uh, I'm going to say push. <laughs> 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 what were we in the SEC championship? I can't even remember. SEC? Uh, I think we were we were close to, if not over that, in wait, wait the for Orange it. Bowl. You're looking up the SEC championship game or the Orange Bowl? I'm looking at the SEC championship game. All right, first downs. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <sighs> this is way under in that game. I don't know why you're trying to check that game. Yeah, we were way under. That's why I was saying you need to look at the the Orange Bowl. Look more. No, recent. I don't care about the Orange Bowl. There's you, you, no, no, Jim. Okay. No. So let's just say. Okay, so what do you got? Over under fifty percent third down conversions. <laughs> Push. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, and Bama fan complains about Georgia fans barking. Over under two thousand. I mean, I feel like over, like, for some reason, people, like, don't understand that we bark, and they're like, you guys bark. So, over. Um, yeah, for, seriously. Especially if we then, win, it's definitely going to be, like, skyrocketed. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, and then over under Georgia fan takeover in Indianapolis, uh, 55%. I'm going to go mm. over. I'm going to go over. I, I, it sounds like we actually were outnumbered in the Orange Bowl. I forgot to talk about that. Um, I heard, yeah. uh, I heard that from a friend of the show, our buddy, Matt Moore. Um, he was there and he said it was definitely more, uh, you know, more Michigan fans still, but I'm well, expecting it to be. Did he give you a percentage or like anything like that? His, I also, his was like really high. He was like, Oh man, it was like, I, I, he did. It was something crazy though. Cause I, uh, I can't remember what it was though. He said like. Uh, like 65, 35 or something like that. Um, uh, but I think, it, yeah. Aaron, Aaron Murray, Aaron Murray gave it like a 55% Michigan. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. I was, yeah. Cause I heard him say that on, on punt and pass. So mm-hmm. it, his was a little bit more even than what Matt was saying. So I think Matt yeah. was sitting up amongst a bunch of Michigan fans. <laughs> so that may have <laughs> viewed his view. Poor bastard. Uh, Is he going to the national championship? 
last I talked, I don't have confirmation that he'll be here. I know he is trying to make it work. Uh, that's the last I heard. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. So that's it. That's it for Coach Trill Bills over unders. As always, Coach, thank you uh, for the over unders. Um, all right. Let's get to the final, the final predictions. So, Odd Shark, uh, not a sponsor. It has okay. So here's what I did see. This is interesting. Odd Shark has Georgia as a three point favorite. Uh, ESPN I saw has Georgia as a two and a half point favorite, which I think two and a half is what it opened at. Um, but at any rate, again, reminder the line moved up. Yeah, yeah, it opened at two and a half and it moved up to three. Right? Yeah, uh, but ESPN mm-hmm. still has it at two and a half from what I saw. But at any rate, um. You know, clearly Vegas is like, clearly Vegas is part of the anti-Georgia deep state um, because, you know, Nick Saban used the, as he called it, yummy rat poison in the SEC championship game. I I, I figured after that, there would be no way we could be favored again. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I figured everyone would be like, oh, you know, uh, we learned our lesson. Don't doubt Saban all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm kind of frustrated by that, honestly, because I feel like it just gives Saban fuel for that fire, but whatever. Both both the coaches all week are, um, I'm sure, claiming that, you know, it's us against the world and everyone's doubting us. <laughs> I'm sure both, yeah, seriously. both coaches are trying to do that. Um I think the biggest the biggest thing uh, the biggest thing that I saw with that was like Nick Saban talking about all the adversity that Alabama has been through this season. <laughs> It's you know it's like you know, Bryce Young showed all the doubters when he won the Heisman. <laughs> I mean, come on, Nick. <laughs> no, no one's ever believed in us. Um, so yeah, so the line is uh, Georgia by three. Uh, over under is fifty two points. Um, so that would give us an implied mm. score of twenty seven and a half to twenty four and a half uh, based on the line. Um, the odd shark, uh, their predicted score is Georgia winning 39.6 to 32.8, which would be a cover and hit the over. Um, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I, I need you. I need you to go first. I'm, I'm you need to, go I need first. to see where you're at. Right. I need to see where you're at. All right. I have a couple of things. Um, I've already talked about, you know, are we going to see the team that showed up 13 times, the team that should have one time? Um, you know, at this point, I have to believe we're going to see this, the team that showed up 13 times. Um, I, mean, I mean, the theme of the season, right? Like you're either a leader or not. Um, and then here's my nugget. Alabama has never won back-to-back college football playoff championships. Every time they've won it, they made it back the next year, and they lost. That's going to happen again. Georgia wins thirty-one to twenty-eight. That is a push, and the over. Nice. Um, out of curiosity, so if they won the national championship and then came back the next year, what was the score? <laughs> the score each subsequent year. Yeah. I don't have that. Don't have that. Well, it doesn't really matter. I, I'm just curious for the for the for the folks out there. You drop that nugget out there, and I'm like, well, okay, okay, here you go. Because they okay. got they got blown out. They got blown out the, the, by so Clemson there was one a, year. Well, so the first the loss the first lo- the loss to Clemson after the 2016 season, they mm-hmm. lost 35 to 31. Okay. Uh, then then they then the following year uh, they beat us. The year after that. Um, they lost again to Clemson 44 to 16. That's the blowout mm. that you referenced. So yeah. those are the two losses. So they had a close one in both to Clemson. Close one. Um, yeah, both to Clemson. Yep. Um, all right. So I did a little a little numbering that, that I sent to the text thread earlier this week. Um since I haven't seen like the impact, I haven't seen the impact score uh, ratings or whatever from from everyone. So there's there's a couple of folks that 
that we follow. Uh, obviously, Odd Shark. Then there's a conglomeration of uh, there's a conglomeration of the uh, sources that ESPN, I guess, gets their predictions from that they list out on on the website that have predicted scores and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I basically just took an average out of all of mm-hmm. them. I, I took myself out of this equation and just tried to figure out like, what do these people think? Um, yeah. There's um, stats of war on, on Twitter. Um, that is a, has been right. And has also been very wrong in the past mm-hmm. um, on their predicted source. So I just did an average of everything. So I've got a 35 to 34 UGA win. I just, I like had like a, I had a heart attack ahead of time just now thinking about that. <laughs> now granted, I've got a three point game, but whew. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a 30, if, if it comes down to something like that, like that's, I mean, that's a fun game and that's, and that's actually like, to be fair yeah. to my Alabama buddies, like, I make fun of this. Like, you know, I've got super hardcore person that I don't really interact with. Haven't really asked about the, about the game. Like we've kind of Mm -hmm. just been like, okay, you guys are good. We're good. Like kept a distance. Then I've got two, two closer buddies that I I interact with. One is kind of like a passive fan. And he's like, dude, George is good, man. You know, he's kind of like middle of the road. Like that, you know, Saban's Saban's the goat. Like his money's on Saban every every game. Okay, yeah. cool, got it. Well, the other buddy that I have that's the Alabama alumni. So we got two alumni that I, uh, you know, I, I'm an alumni. He's an alumni. Like these, this is this is the person that I want to interact with on this. Yeah. Um, and he said the same thing that I did. Like what he wants is just a. What I would love to see is just us play perfect and Alabama play perfect and just see who comes out on top. Like. Yeah, Both it was pretty of these disappointing teams. to see us wet the bed the last game. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I would almost, like, I hesitate to say it. Like, like I don't want any turnover. Vic. I don't want any excuses. I want zero excuses. Nobody turned the ball over. Let's just go mm-hmm. out good on good. Uh, like, frankly, like, I hope I hope all our best players play. I hope all our best players play so that no, there's no excuses whatsoever. And just yeah. go good on good and just see who wins. And frankly, yep. like everything else being equal, talent our talent is basically negligible, and my yep. predicted score is basically negligible, which is kind yep. of what happened in 2017. It's what happened in 2012. Um, yep. I just hope that we edge them out. I just want to see a yep. good game. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Uh, I, I think if if it if it winds up with either of those scores, it's going to be you know game of the century of the year. For sure. <laughs> I mean, I think it would be a game of the century. Like, yeah. I mean, if if yeah, Stetson's it pretty, every year, you, know, you get the game of the century of the year. Yeah. <laughs> the game of the century of the yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, if Stetson's putting up that kind of points, and frankly, maybe it's not Stetson, but like you know, all intents and purposes, uh, if Stetson's yeah. putting up those numbers, if Stetson's putting up those numbers, like yeah. holy, sh- yeah, like holy cow, dude, like yeah. Love it. Yeah, Love for sure. Love it. Which well, is why I, I have the dog's edge. I I don't know how I'm going to like make it until Monday. Like I I'm already like it's uh which is Wednesday by the way. We're we're recording Wednesday night. Um so so full transparency away. as you know, I'm not going to the game. I'm at, you yeah. and I are actually going to have a chance to link up before the game potentially. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I'll see you. I will see you as Saturday. I'm not sure who all is going to come with me. It might end up just being me trying to convince, uh, trying to bring a, a, a kid along with me. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, well, it, I will at least get to see the most famous podcaster in the Powell household, Carter Powell, and his soccer team uh, playing in Charlotte this weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be, fun. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, so that's where I, that's where I'm sitting right now. Right. So, um, Fair, I'm like, fair. dude, I've, I've, I've got to get through three days worth of like soccer stuff because <laughs> I'm going to be traveling. I'm traveling Friday afternoon. I'm actually going to pick him up early from school. He doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to pick him up early from school. Um, yeah. And he and I are basically going to leave and we're going to have a little father-son weekend. 
unfortunately, yeah. I'm not going to Indianapolis, which my <laughs> wife and I flirted with. But right, right, um, right. He and I are going to have a, a father son weekend up in Charlotte with him and his buddies. We're staying at the um, Aloft Balaton. If you're in the if you're in the area, Greg, before you leave town, if you want to get together, let me know. Anybody uh, just, in Charlotte wants to get the, together for the, for the Charlotte people. It's Ballantine, just if we're ah. Ballantine. But that's okay. You don't live here. No worries. <laughs> The Pineville area. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, my son is representing the state of Georgia, which, you know, go dogs. Um, representing the state of Georgia up in Charlotte, where it all began. We're, 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 we're making the trip back. This is all Man, talking about. Man, how about, about that, where... dude? I hadn't even thought about that. Weekend yeah. one, you're up in Charlotte. Exactly. Yeah, and that was the first time we had seen each other in, like, who knows how long. I think we, we couldn't even remember the last time we had actually seen each other. <laughs> we, yeah, we record this two states away. Uh, exactly and uh man yeah all back where it back where it began on saturday right back that's where it we, all began on saturday we, i hadn't even i hadn't even thought about it like that that's awesome that's gonna be awesome i i, I am looking forward to seeing you guys on saturday we'll be, and we'll I, be haven't, able to... I, I haven't met carter powell in person so this is that's, gonna true. Be <laughs> that's true that's true because uh, uh, the game that i went to you weren't there um that's right, that's right. Uh, I'll be able. To, I'll be able to send you off. We'll be able to send you off. We'll, we'll be like Vikings, just sending you off into the ocean, whatever. Like go and pill, go pillage, go and pillage. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so I. I that, so that's that's on, on my side of things. Like I'm looking forward to this because not only is he representing the state of Georgia, but he's representing like his age group. And we're playing older boys, so mm. he's going to be playing older boys from other states that are more established than Georgia, like Virginia and Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, big, 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 uh, big soccer states. Um, so it's actually going to be if you're if you are a soccer fan and want to see some you know potential uh, U.S. players playing, I guarantee you there's at least one kid that's going to be playing for the U.S. national team at some point. Uh, he's really good. Yeah. Uh, some good soccer, nice. some good soccer going on. Nice, yeah, man, that's gonna be fun. That'll 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 be fun, and uh, and now maybe there'll be a trip to go try and get some bourbon across the border into South Carolina. We'll see, we'll see. TBD. Well, I can I can guarantee you that I'm going to stop because <laughs> <laughs> I need I need to jump off I need to jump off point after dealing with. Flipping Gaffney, like I, I need, mm. I need, a, I, uh, I need, a, I need to jump tragic. off to deal yeah. with to deal with South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, 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 get it together, South Carolina. Get to get your highways in order. Uh, yeah. Well, cool. Anyway, well, and then uh, any plans for the any any plans for like a watch party Monday? It's a Monday night. I mean, I get work the next day. It's always tough. I, I, I don't. I still don't like that, but. You got yeah. You got, the Monday, just, gonna, just gonna watch at home. The Monday's tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna be yeah. I'm gonna be trying to watch at home. I was talking to my wife about trying to put together something, but I'm gonna be coming back Sunday. So like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a quick turnaround. It's a it's a fairly quick turnaround. Um, I don't know. The other thing that we've got playing on is like we've got some family exposure to to COVID and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, it being on a Monday is not good. Like uh, my brother-in-law would be the one that I would really want to watch it with, which, you know, by the way, Austin, I've got your cigar that we're our, our victory cigar. So sucks for you if you don't come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Austin was the first, uh, person outside of you and myself and my dad to have a, my got a podcast hat. So that's true. Fun fact. That's true. Fact. Which he gets asked about at work. <laughs> on his construction site. <laughs> uh, which, if you, I, I will say, if you're listening uh, and you're going to be in Indianapolis, uh, I will be there. Frip Dog will be there. Um, we'll both, one of us will have on a My God a Podcast hat for sure. Um, I'm going to bust out the starter jacket that we talked about last season that I bought. <laughs> I got it before last season and never got a chance to wear it. So I'm going to wear that to Natty, to the Natty. Uh, so that that is the plan. Um, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait, man. I'm. I'm. I'm excited. This is. Uh, I mean, this is. This is what it's all about, right? I mean, this is what. Uh, this is what you do this for. Um, I'm excited. It's, I'm excited. It's what. It's what you got to do, and you know, like I said, we uh, nugget nugget that we didn't talk about. Um, mm. 
there's another coach in NCAA that has all had also been winless against Nick Saban until this season. That man's name is Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher was 0-4 going into this year against Nick Saban. Kirby Smart is 0-4 against Nick Saban currently. Yeah. Jimbo Fisher beat him on his fifth attempt. <laughs> fifth time's the charm. Fifth time's like the charm. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it would be uh, it would be legendary. You know, it would be the first championship since 1980, and it would also be the first ever Georgia team to win 14 games. Uh, that has never happened. So, it would be special. Yep. It would be special. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, let's just let's just hope that uh, we're talking around this time next week, uh, doing a national champions review. That'd be awesome. Abs- absolutely, yeah, man. Awesome. You guys enjoy, um, you know, win win lose. I hope you guys enjoy uh, Indianapolis. Yep. But you know, I'm hoping that there's going to be some cake and cigars destroyed. Amen. I love it. All right, man. This has been, uh, first off, thank you for coming along this ride with me. Um, we started this last season. Uh, you were gracious enough to agree when I sprung the idea on you, like super last minute. Before the <laughs> game. And uh, it's super fun to think it. about. <laughs> hey, you want to do a podcast? Yeah, sure. <laughs> when are we going to do When are we going to start? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, hey, that's how I roll. That's how I roll. So yeah, so I don't know, man. Thanks for doing this with me. Uh, it's been a blast, and uh, I feel like it's all of this. This is awesome. It's fun, man. It's been building, and uh, I have a feeling we're. I'm going to be shooting some fireworks off at some Bama fans' driveways <laughs> on Monday. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs>